Hi guys, Monica here. A um, couple things. First off, if you have not seen Downton Abbey this past um, Sunday and you're an avid fan and you don't want any spoilers, okay, I get that. So at the end of, uh, I'll tell you it towards the end of the video to shut it off and to not go any further because I'm, I want to talk about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, first off, Timeless Kisses event happening on Facebook, February 12th to the 19th. I've been posting some ads for it, um, but it's a big event, 50 plus grand prize um, books. There's a page on my website that shows all of the authors who've donated a book. I've got a lot of big events. Almost every one of the spotlights in the evening during the event is already taken. Um, <clears throat> from sweet to hot and spicy to um, erotic to uh, from ancient Rome all the way through to World War II. You know, we've, we've got it all in terms of historical romance. So make sure that you click on the link and pop over and either click that you're going or that you're interested so you'll get some updates from the event play page. <coughs> Excuse me. Forever Mine. I'm rereading this book. I, I'm not, as an author, I normally don't reread my books. I just, I write them, proof them, I put them out there, they're gone. Um, as a general rule, I just don't, I might read them, you know, maybe years later, but for the most part, I just, I don't, um, cause the story's done, it's over and there's nothing I want to do with it, but forever mine, I am reading this book again. I think this is like the fourth or fifth time for me. That's pretty, I, I just don't do that with the book, but this book just, it just rings to my soul. And if you've not read it, please go and read it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, 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 I can't emphasize enough how proud I am of this book. If you have read it and you haven't left a review, please go to Amazon, Barnes and wherever. Most people, it's Amazon these days. Um, write a review, especially on Amazon, because it um, <clears throat> those reviews determine how a book is ranked. Um, if it's an older book and it gets a new review, it gets pushed up a couple thousand. So it gets visibility. Right now, the book is just, the book has never gotten really big visibility for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I think I'm better than I am in terms of being a writer. Um, <clears throat> but get the book. If you haven't already, read it. If you have read it, do a review for me. I'd really appreciate it because I love this book so much. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, Downton Abbey. Didn't watch it? Turn off the video right now. I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm done. Um, the whole dining room scene. Oh, my God. I just sat there going. It was just so unexpected. I went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, the whole time. I mean, I don't know how many times I said it because it was just so... I really thought he was dying. <laughs> I did. And I'm like, don't kill off my, my, oh, just don't. Because I love, I love Hugh Bonneville. So it was like, don't kill him off. But <clears throat> the one scene where he kind of spews across the table um, and everybody's staring at him in horror. And I'm like, rightfully so. But Cora gets splattered. And I'm like, and the whole time I'm like, oh my God. But then I thought, Hugh Bonneville did that on purpose. Why would she get splattered? She's the only one that got splattered, even though she was across the table from him. She gets splattered. I think Hugh Bonneville, who is known as a prankster, I think he went a little bit overboard and <laughs> he just got her. But she didn't go out of character at all. So um, that was really, after after the whole scary incident was over and I kind of chuckled. <clears throat> about that. Um, then um, Tom and Mary. I'm making a prediction right here. Y'all be able to pop on and tell me no. I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I was talking out of my rear end. But ever since the, like the last the, the last couple seasons, I have always said Tom and Mary would make the perfect couple because she's she's forward thinking even though she's, you know, still kind of 
set in her ways in terms of her status. You know, she's a little bit of a snob. But I, I see her and Tom as being two of the kind of people who could actually get together. It might not be a grand romance. It might not be a grand passion. But I really think the two of these are going, these two characters are going to wind up together. Um, and I hope it doesn't work out too that everybody winds up with somebody in this because right now Julian Fellows he's got you know um, Daisy's father-in-law and Mrs. Padmore it looks like whoa there could be something going on there then the young man young foot servant or whatever he's wanting to learn how to do pigs and the father-in-law the father-in-law saying Daisy could go come and work with him so that kind of sets the two of them up and you've got um, Bates and Anna and you've got Mr. and Mrs. Hughes now and uh, or not Hughes, Carson and you've got who else? I mean it's sort of Edith's going to wind up getting oh god that kiss scene was great I was like so what you're not going to bed now? <laughs> so that was a really good scene so okay like I said Mary and Tom at the end of the season I really think they're going to, if they're not an actual item, they're going to leave you. They're going to leave the show making you think that they will get together eventually. Um, I, I just, I can't see Mary as not getting married again. And I can't see her as getting married to any of these playboy types that she's seeing. And I really do think that Tom will take her down a notch or two because the bitch really needs it. <laughs> so, all right, six and a half minutes. I'm out of here. I'll talk to you next week. See you. Bye.